Welcome to Dongle Life. I am holding here the brand new 16 inch $5,000 MacBook Pro. This is the top tier of MacBook Pros with all the upgrades Apple has to offer. This is the best of the best. And unlike all the other YouTubers who received this computer for free and were compelled to give favorable reviews, I bought it with my own money and I'm going to give you an honest reporting about this product with the good, the bad, and the ugly. When you have to shoot, shoot, don't talk. According to Apple and all the other YouTube reviewers, this is basically the beast of all machines. This device is one step away before evolving into a sophisticated AI beast that can turn humanity into ashes. But luckily, Apple developers left us a safety key. Without the MagSafe, we can just pull the electricity cord, drag this computer to the floor and smash it to the ground. So compared to my 2015 MacBook Pro, this machine has a bigger screen of 16 inch, faster performance, better RAM of 64 gigabyte, more hard drive space, longer battery life, enhanced graphic card, touch bar and touch bar ID, six speakers, round system for better music and built in studio quality mics. To be honest, I'm not excited at all about this product because of the dongle life. It has been sitting here for more than a month and I've been pushing and squeezing the juice out of my 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro, but the inevitable has finally arrived and I couldn't take the very slow speed of my nearly deceased 2015 MacBook Pro, rest in peace. So without further ado, I am upgrading. But we we'll talk about this later. Let's go to the unboxing table first. night of migration assistant where I transfer all my data from my 2015 MacBook into the 2019 brand new MacBook Pro. Some crashes and freezes on the first time I turn on the computer. Here it is. Yay! So the first thing I want to talk about is the specs of this formidable machine and the formidable price. In this machine, I chose the 8 core as opposed to the 6 core 9 generation Intel Core i9 processor, an initial increase of $400 in price and a starting base price of $2,800. Then for an extra $200, I upgraded it to the 2.4 GHz model and for the RAM, because I'm multitasking all the time, I upgraded it for 64 GB at a bargain price of an additional $800. And of course, because I'm editing a lot of videos, I wanted to enhance the graphic card for 8 GB RAM as opposed to just 4, which was surprisingly reasonable for an Apple product, just an extra $100. For the storage, I really wanted to upgrade for 8 TB because my videos consume a lot of space, but it was ridiculously expensive. An additional $2,200, it's almost the price of a brand new MacBook Pro, so I settled for just two terabyte and paid again a bargain price of additional $400 for the extra terabyte. 
Seriously, Apple, I don't know who can afford the 8 terabyte apart from the YouTube influencer uh, who receive it for free and the employees of big production companies that also receive it for free. That brings us for a subtotal of 4,300 US dollar and of course you want the Apple Care for such an expensive computer that's another 379 US dollar. And with all the taxes and fees we reach for about 5,000 dollar a very cost friendly computer Apple. The grade for affordability is zero. Comparing the price to my 15-inch MacBook Pro, which back in the day was also top tier, it costed around $3,800 including taxes out of the box. That's about 35% extra increase in price. However, I did use my last MacBook Pro for 5 years, so if I use this one for the same amount of time, that's about $1,000 per year, which I guess is reasonable. That's me trying to convince myself. So after paying this expensive price, you would expect reliability, right? Well, think again. After my migration assistant finished, as I mentioned before, and I was excited to use my new MacBook Pro, it stuck, froze, and crashed on the first try. First attempt. First time I turn on the computer, and it's stuck. Good job, Apple. I feel I earned great value for my money, Apple. Thank you very much. In terms of size, the computers are almost identical. The 2019 is a little bit thinner and it feels more or less like the same weight. I don't know which one weighs more or less. They kind of feel the same. In terms of the extra inch of screen size, I'm not noticing the extra inch as a significant game changer but the Retina display is surely sharper and better, but I do see myself a lot of the times in the reflections, which is annoying. In terms of the ports and accessibility, the 15 inch 2015 MacBook Pro wins by a big time. And I must say it out loud and clear, the 2019 is a huge downgrade. First of all, why Apple, why? Why would you take away the elegantly designed, perfectly executed MagSafe? Take a look. 2015 power adapter, 2019 power adapter. Make safe. Just put it in. Oh, I show it to you again the ingenuity of this amazing power adapter. Up, up, up. Now let's see in the 2019. Uh, why Apple? Why? Now look, same amount of force. Same amount of force. Uh, beautiful, ugly. Uh, uh, safe, dangerous Apple. Uh, slick and innovative, very cumbersome and dangerous again. I can just drag the computer with the power adapter. Why would you think it's better? Why Apple? This was one of Steve Jobs' most memorable speeches. MagSafe. Now, how many of you have ever had your notebook go flying off its work surface when somebody caught your power adapter cord in their foot? Right? Whether it's your pet or your kid or your roommate, well, this is going to end that. Because the MagSafe connector is a new power adapter that we got with a connect new connector that's magnetically held in. And if when the cord gets yanked, it just pulls right off. It works beautifully. Now let's talk about dongles. With my 2015, I had everything I need to access my computer. If I had a Thunderbolt drive, I just plugged to the Thunderbolt port like this. If I had a USB stick, I would just plug it to the USB port. If I had an SD card, I would just plug it to the SD port right here. But with the 2019 models, I need dongles. Dongles, dongles, dongles. 
why Apple? Why would you limit us? Developers and videographers alike and photographers. Why would you limit us from an easy importing and exporting workflow to our computer? Why would you take it away from us? With my 2015 MacBook Pro, I can just plug my SD card, my USB key, my Thunderbolt hard drive directly to the computer. Now I need dongles, 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 dongles for everything. And if you forget the dongles and you can't work unless you buy another one. And what if I am stuck in a city somewhere in the middle of the night in a village in Vietnam or somewhere in Africa and I cannot find a place to buy a dongle? Or worse, what if there is a deadly virus out there and I cannot leave the house to buy a dongle? And even if I could leave the house to buy a dongle, I wouldn't have where to buy it because all the shops are closed because there is a deadly virus out there. And then I will need to spend five or six days waiting for the shipment to come without working because I have no way to import my footage to the computer because I have no dongles. And I have to wait six days for the delivery because there is a deadly virus. Very disappointing, Apple. Very disappointing. This has just happened because of the loose connection with the SD card. This is why I didn't upgrade my MacBook Pro 2015 for three years because I hoped that Apple developers would understand their stupid mistake and not only bring back the MagSafe, but would also bring back all these necessary ports. The most important is the SD slot. Why Apple, why are you so impervious to our basic needs? Sorry guys, I really had to take it off my chest because this topic really pisses me off. The next topic I want to talk about is the speakers. Oh my God, guys, but the six speakers sound system are amazing. The sound is just outstanding. It still cannot replace a JBL or Bose external speakers, but for a notebook, it is the best I have heard. It is certainly room filling, wide stereo sound like you've never heard from a notebook before. Quote unquote Apple. I cannot play it for you because you will not be able to hear the sound, but trust me, the sound quality is superb. The next thing I want to test is the built-in HD camera and microphone. Right now I'm using the built-in camera and mic on the 2019 MacBook Pro. Apple claims that the built-in studio quality 3 mic array rivals professional third-party microphones for creating super clean podcast or music recordings on the go. What do you guys think? How does the audio sound like? And just for comparison, right now I'm using the 2015 MacBook Pro built-in camera and mic. I think it does prove a significant improvement but what I don't understand is why Apple cannot put a 4K camera like in the iPhone. Still, people are using the computers for podcasts and YouTube. We want a good quality 4K camera also on the computer. The next thing I want to talk about is the new Magic Keyboard versus the old Butterfly Keyboard. Personally, I don't feel a big difference at all. It does feel a little bit deeper and has a bit more quiet touch to it but it's not something to write home about and definitely it's not something your mom would care about. The next element in the new MacBook Pro is the Touch ID and the Touch Bar. I heard a lot of other YouTubers who criticize it, but I found it not just cool, but also very useful. First, not needing to type passwords all the time and just use your fingerprint for fast authentication is awesome. And second, the Touch Bar is really useful especially for sending emails or messages to friends to te for texting. Just the emoji keyboard makes it worth it. In addition, the new MacBook Pro also has a ridiculously large trackpad. Take a look at the difference. I still haven't decided if I like it or not. On the one end, it's convenient. On the other end, I keep pressing on it by mistake when typing because it's just so big. Time will tell if it is an advantage or a nuisance. And now for the last part of the video, the speed test. Since I cloned my 2015 MacBook Pro to the new 2019 MacBook, all the software processes are exactly identical. So let's see how much speed all this money bought me. The first test is the power on. Three, two, one, start.
The second test is the Xcode compile. I'm using this formidable machine for programming iPhone applications. So let's check out the compile speed. On my 2015, it's taking forever now. It's just unbearable. Start. The third test is Final Cut Pro rendering for editing movies. It's taking a while to render. So let's check out the same project. Two, one, start. Finish. The MacBook Pro 2015 is at 48%, which is in par with what Apple advertised 2.1 times faster. And the last and final test, transfer a large image from an iPhone. I have a 12 gigabyte, 20 minutes 4K video file on my iPhone 11 that no matter what I do, I cannot transfer it to my computer, not using AirDrop, not using image capture. Just, I can. Let's see if the new MacBook Pro resolves this issue. And if it does, it was completely worth the $5,000. That is the ultimate test. And you won't believe it, it worked. The only weird thing is that on the 2019, it showed me that the file is not 12 gigabyte, but only 5.8 gigabytes. I have no explanation for this. But I'm happy that I could finally transfer my Mua Thai Thai boxing video to my computer. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching and please subscribe to my channel for cool things to do, for cool travel ideas, adventures, tech reviews like this one if you find it useful. And if you have any other requests for videos, comment them below. I forgot to say, I think Dan Brazilian should really buy a diamond for me for one of his beautiful women as a gift. They do so much for him, you should pay back. Do you agree? Comment below.